Hello, my name is Paul Pfeiffer. I'm the CFO for the Anderson Companies, and I'm here today to talk about fourth quarter in the trucking industry. But before I talk about Q4, let's talk a little bit about where we've come in the first three quarters of the year. If you remember the start of the year, we were dealing with record levels of spot rates in the industry. Right? We had a lot of traffic moving throughout the U.S. with freight, but not enough trucks to be able to move it. At the same time, we were also hearing about inflation and how things were getting to be more expensive. Almost everything we bought from gas for our cars to food, other basic necessities, were more expensive than they were the previous year. And in June, the DOE hit a record high for the average cost for a gallon of diesel fuel. As a matter of fact, even today, that price is about $1.50 higher than it was a year ago at this time, which is about a 40% increase year over year. And on top of all that, it was really hard for any carriers to get access to a new truck. Truck manufacturers were dealing with part shortages and labor supply issues that prevented them from producing enough trucks to replace the older trucks that were more costly to run that we needed to get out of the industry. So if that's where we were in the first three quarters of the year, now that we're entering Q4, where are we at? Well, unfortunately, it's still difficult to be able to get access to a new truck. The part supply shortages, while better from a supply chain standpoint, are still spotty, and everybody is dealing with labor supply shortages, which again puts the truck manufacturers in a position where they're forecasting that they're not gonna produce a lot more trucks this next year than they were able to this year. In addition to the fact that it's still difficult to get a truck, the inflation factor that I talked about, unfortunately, has gotten worse. As a matter of fact, in the month of September, we now set another new 40-year high record of inflation with the Consumer Price Index, which is one of the measures of uh, inflation across the U.S., hitting 6.6% on a year-to-date basis. And through all of that, we have the Federal Reserve Bank that is trying to get inflation under control. And the way they're trying to do that is aggressively raise interest rates to try to get consumers to change their buying behavior and buy less, slowing down the economy so they can slow down inflation. Well, what is that and all of those other items having as an effect on freight in the freight markets in Q4? Well, first, as it relates to the consumer spending and what the Fed would like us to do, um, they're not really seeing a change in spending yet. But we are seeing two particular uh, trends start to emerge that we need to be watchful for. The first is, is that consumers are starting to spend a little bit less out of their savings and available cash, and instead, they're spending on credit. That's not a long-term sustainable item, and that'll have bigger implications as we talk about 2023 in the future. The second item that is happening is that people are changing their spending habits, but they're shifting where they spend their money. The past two years of the pandemic, people have been spending more on durable good type items that travel in a truck. Well now, in order to be able to get some sense of normalcy after all of the lockdowns of the last two years, people are shifting their spending back towards service type items. Airlines, hotels, restaurants, going on vacations. So it's not helping the inflation piece yet as the Fed would like, um, but it is changing what the freight market looks like in Q4. So normally, especially the last two years, we've seen a very robust amount of freight moving throughout the U.S. for the fall peak season as retailers soak up a little bit more of the capacity. And that's also pushed spot rates higher during those fall peak seasons. My expectation and the expectation of a lot of people out there right now is that that freight environment, that fall peak, is not going to be as robust as it has been the last two years, unfortunately. There is a good thing, though, as it relates to rates. We've been seeing the spot rates come down all throughout the year. And what's happening now is that they have to hit, or they have not already hit, a floor of contract rates that need to be in place and that need to be maintained 
in order to be able to support the higher driver pay increases that we've seen over the last two years, the higher fuel costs, and the higher cost of running older trucks uh, that we've seen also in the last two years. So if you're a driver and you're sitting back and saying, okay, look, how do I manage through this particular segment of a market cycle? Four things come to mind. The first is make sure that you have a stable and secure base of freight. You're gonna to tend to wanna to look for uh, carriers that have maybe a, a longer history of being in business and that have a broad and diverse customer base. In other words, they don't just service one type of customer, or one type of shipper, or just one type of industry, but instead, if they serve manufacturing and retail and food related or industrial, uh, the broader the market that that particular source serves, the better freight options that you will end up having. The second thing is you may need to run some more miles in order to be able to make up for the lowering spot rates and still produce uh, or achieve a comfortable uh, you know, earnings for yourself. The third item would be to practice good fuel efficiency. So when and if you can, and if the temperatures allow, try to limit the idle on the truck, but also you know, maintain and control um, good speed as well as plan proper trip planning. And the fourth item would be practice good maintenance. It would be making sure that you're getting in and uh, achieving the, uh, you know, the normal regular maintenance schedule that's needed for the truck because that will allow you to avoid the more costly, longer down times uh, that could happen as older, tr older trucks are out on the road still. And in addition to that, if and when you can, try to put a little extra aside into a maintenance account uh, in order to be able to, again, uh, help with those higher maintenance costs on that truck. So those are four items. I know this wasn't all great news, but I'll be back at some time in the near future to talk about 2023. And in the meantime, I hope this was helpful. Thank you and be safe.